An another thing that I wanted to touch on is, is grease traps. I know that there have been uh, issues uh, recently with uh, grease traps around the city, and uh, I'd like to, to see uh, if we can inform residents uh, what they need to know regarding grease tra traps as well. Now, the application of grease traps is primarily commercial establishments, uh, primarily restaurants. Uh, those operations, well, and of course special manufacturing, um, those operations that might put grease or a, or a um, compound such as that into the, the sewer system. And what that does, uh, oversimplification grease trap stops it from going down our sewer line because that cost to do that, the cost of, uh, of treating that amount of water with grease or that, that other foreign product um, is extremely expensive once we get it to the plant. Uh, so the grease trap catches it, traps it, um, cleans the vast majority of it out and then allows, I'm going to call uh, grease less water to go on down because if we have grease in the lines we have to maintain those lines, flush them out. It's a very time-consuming process, um, and it starts clogging uh, the, the sewer system up. Um, and by doing it, the proper sizing, et cetera, um, allows us to keep the quality of water going back to our plant at a, a standard that, that we can more easily treat at a more effective cost. Uh, and then also, on the back end of that, um, be able to provide, or I should say, um, uh, outflow from that plant will be cleaner water that we can actually start using and something that we haven't really touched on, on our reuse project, which is reclaiming that water from, the, uh, from our uh, uh, reclamation plants and start utilizing it again. Uh, but the grease trap, mainly, it's very costly. We have people that go out and, and, and inspect them. And if they meet certain criteria, there's no real problem. But if there are problems, then we start having instituting essentially a, a fine for the operation. Uh, they, the grease traps have to be pumped out periodically, uh, which is an additional cost to those facilities. And we understand that. Uh, but our main purpose has been trying to educate those that uh, fall into that category so that we can better enable them to understand why we go through the process and most importantly what we can do to help help them uh, be in compliance because some of those surcharges can be uh, add up pretty quick and that's where a lot of the uh, the um, um, in I'm gonna say the difficulty for the for those operators has been uh, and it's their operation that's doing it uh, once again these are uh, based around criteria that are required by uh, TCQ which, uh, and even EPA to some extent, that these are things that we have to do. Uh, we're required to do it. If we don't, we get fined. Same thing with the backflow preventers. If we don't have that policy in, in place, we, the PUB, get fined and it has an impact back on our, on our rate payers. So uh, we try to be proactive in all of these things in the education standpoint, uh, most importantly, and then working and developing a program that is more, I'm going to call it, uh, user friendly. Um, it doesn't always work that way. Uh, there are some that uh, disagree with the, the policy that we have put in, but these are mandated things that we have to adhere to. All right, and who can people reach out to if they have questions uh, to make sure that they're in compliance? We, we have a pretreatment uh, program, uh, as the chairman just said, that is required by the state, and they can, they can contact the pretreatment department um, and the, the supervisor. Uh, it's, it, it's so important for, for our customers to understand why this is necessary. Uh, we have, we're blessed to have a lot of restaurants in McAllen. And those restaurants are, are, are the cause of, for the most part, of fats and greases going into our lines. And so this grease trap is, is specifically made to try to trap as much of it as possible. And the surcharges that the chairman uh, alluded to are to ensure that the costs that it takes to treat those fats and greases are charged to the to the folks that are attributing to it and instead of the you know the the regular uh, residential homeowner and so on so uh, contact our pretreatment department we're going to make a real big effort um, here in the immediate future in in trying to educate um, our customers on this issue it's so important to us because 
The surcharge is a revenue that we do not want. Believe it or not, it is a revenue that we do not want because when we're collecting this revenue, that means that we've got traps that have an excess of fats that we don't want. So when you're not getting a surcharge, that's good for everyone. One, the, the, the vendor, the restaurant, is not having to pay it, and we're not having to treat it. So in the end, the best case scenario for all of us is to have uh, a grease trap that meets specifications, that is working properly, that is maintained properly, and those are the kinds of things that we want to go out and educate our, our public on, and we're wanting to do it when we're going to do it. It's probably going to be at least yearly, if not twice a year, where we're going to invite restaurant owners and so on to, uh, to come and learn a little bit about, about this thing. And I want to say this, the issue that, that we deal with the most is with existing establishments. And believe me, Ray, we are very sensitive to that because you're talking about a, a situation where uh, an establishment changes hands, either someone sells a restaurant or sells, uh, sells a, a location that was in a restaurant prior to that sale and now is going to be. So now you have an establishment that doesn't have a grease trap or doesn't have a grease trap of, of sufficient capacity and we're asking them to go and have this expense and, and install this thing, it may be in a place that doesn't even fit. So we're very sensitive to that. We want to avoid those situations as much as possible, but we're here to serve them, and, and we have to always keep that in mind. So the educational process that we hope to, to start is going to try to, to meet that need uh, here soon. All right. uh, one other thing to add to that is, although this applies primarily to restaurants, uh, but every home has a kitchen too. And uh, although it may be smaller amounts, uh, the effect is the same. Uh, I would encourage folks to, to be conscious of not putting grease uh, down their uh, sewer, uh, down in their sink or their toilet or whichever, because the same things occur downstream and at the plant. Uh, there are better ways to take care of that, putting that into your solid waste uh, rather than uh, liquid waste uh, through a sink or a toilet or something of that nature. What would you recommend as far as uh, putting food in, in, a, in a disposal? A lot of people like to just <clears throat> put it in the disposal. Do you discourage that? Well, grease, yes. Um, the, any other, um, I'm going to call it uh, a food product that can go into disposal uh, without clogging it uh, is, is going to be fine. But when you add grease to it, it also presents plumbing maintenance issues for that homeowner or for that apartment owner or for whoever it is that that uh, eventually those lines are going to have to be cleaned out because they're getting coated by grease. Coating of grease, it, it grabs other things and, and, and embeds food product in it and it becomes smelly, etc. But uh, most important thing is, you know, it's uh, we've got to control the amount of grease that, that goes into our uh, sewer system so that it can uh, does not in negatively impact our operation costs.